as another application of CLO theory, we show if G is a simple non-abelian group with 60 elements, then G is isomorphic to A5, the alternating group on five letters. So that means if we have a simple non-abelian group of 60 elements, there's only one isomorphism class. We'll also show that A5 is isomorphic to the symmetry group of rigid motions of a regular icosahedron. Now, to show our statement, I'll need two things. First, we're going to use CELO theory to show that G contains a subgroup of order 12. With that, we can use the corollary to Cayley's theorem to embed our group as a subgroup of S5, a symmetric group on five letters. Then, we'll show that A5 is the only subgroup of S5 with index 2. Now, for the basics of CELO theory, okay, what do I need? We have the order of our group G, I'll have a prime P, and let's suppose we can write the order of the group as P to some power times M, where M and P are relatively prime. So here I've written P in terms of the highest power that divides the order of G. CELO theory says there's gonna exist a subgroup of order P to the K, call that a CELO P subgroup, all CELO P subgroups are conjugate. And if we want to count the number of CELO P subgroups, we have the following recipe. The number is congruent to 1 mod P, and the number divides the order of the group. OK, we could do better and say the number divides the order of the group divided by P of the K. So there's no factor of P in here. Now, if our group is simple, this says the only normal subgroups are the identity subgroup and the group itself. So that means when we have a divisor of the order of the group, np is going to be greater than 1. If it was equal to 1, then we'd have a unique subgroup of a given order, and then it would be normal. Now, we take 60. I can write that as 2 squared times 3 times 5. So let's focus on the 5 for here. Number of CELO 5 subgroups is congruent to 1 mod 5. It's going to have to divide okay, 2 squared times 3, which is 12. So we're going to have the number of CELO 5 subgroups is 1 or 6. Can't be 1, so we have to have 6 of these. Now, if I count the number of elements of order 5, okay, well, our CELO 5 subgroups have five elements in them, so they're isomorphic to Z mod five. And if we intersect any two of these, okay, they either intersect in the identity or in everything. So that means if I want to count the number of elements of order five, we have six times five elements minus the identity element, it gives me 24 elements of order five. If we check against A5, okay, these are going to be the five cycles, and we have 24 in here by using combinatorics. So we have 5 factorial divided by 5 is 24. How about the normalizer of a CELO 5? We have the number of CELO 5 subgroups is equal to the order of the group divided by the order of the normalizer of any CELO 5. So this order is equal to 10. With that, we have there's no subgroup of order 15. If there were, CELO theory says, the CELO 5 in the subgroup is unique, so it's normal. That means there's an element of order 3 that normalizes our CELO 5. Since 3 doesn't divide 10, this can't happen. Now, if we move on to P equals 3, the number of CELO 3 subgroups is congruent to 1 mod 3, and it must divide 20. So the candidates are 1, 4, and 10. If I consider the normalizer of a CELO 3, we have that no subgroup of order 15 exists, so if we had an element of order 5 in the normalizer of our CELO 3, well, that would give us okay, a way to construct a semi-direct product of a Z5 with a Z3. And that would give us subgroup of order 15, a Z mod 15. So that can't happen. That means the number of CELO 3s it's going to be some multiple of 5, because 5 doesn't divide the normalizer. 
So that means we have to have 10. If we count the elements of order three, okay, with 10 times three minus the identity element gives me 20. If we compare with A5, we have 23 cycles. Okay, so five, four, three, divide by three gives me 20. And we'll have, when we consider the order of the normalizer, we get 60 divided by 10 gives me six. Now, we only have two isomorphism classes for groups with order six, either Z mod six or S3, the symmetric group on three letters. So one's abelian, one's not abelian. If this was isomorphic to Z mod six, then if we took the intersection of any two normalizers, okay, for different CeeLo threes, they wouldn't be able to contain elements of order three or six. Okay, if they both contain an element of order three, we'd be looking at the same CeeLo three subgroup. If they both contain an element of order six, well, if we were cyclic, they would generate the same subgroup. Now, in ZMOT six, there's gonna be two elements of order six. So when we consider the number of CeeLo threes, that means we're gonna generate 20 elements of order six. If I count elements, we have the identity for one, 24 elements of order five, 20 elements of order three, and now we have 20 elements of order six. That's gonna be greater than 60, so that means I couldn't have had a Z mod six. So it has to be an S3. Known the number of elements of order three, we can revisit the normalizer of the CeeLo five. Now, if that was isomorphic to a Z mod 10, okay, we can note all the elements in Z mod 10 with their orders. Then, using the same argument as before, we're gonna contribute six times four elements of order 10. Then when we count, we get a number that's greater than 60. So this can't happen. So the normalizer of the CeeLo five is isomorphic to a D10, symmetry group of a regular pentagon. If we're keeping track of elements in here, we're gonna have five rotations. So we have the identity element, four elements of order five, five reflections. So those are all elements of order two. Now, if we consider the number of CeeLo two subgroups, okay, we know that numbers can grow into one mod two, and it must divide three times five. So the candidates are one, three, five, and 15. If we check to see how much room is left, okay, we've taken up order one, order five, order three, so there's only 15 spaces left. To fill them up, what I'm gonna do is, we have, okay, at least one CeeLo2 subgroup with four elements in it. So it's either a Z2 cross Z2 or a Z4. So I have at least one element of order two. So let's call that X. If I take the centralizer of X, well, if it's in one of these, the centralizer is gonna have at least four elements. If it contains an element of order three, I can make an element of order six, and we know that that can't happen. If we had an element of order five, I can make an element of order 10, and we know that that can't happen either. So that means centralizer has exactly four elements in it, and for the conjugacy class of this element X, we're gonna have 15 elements. So that's gonna take up all the space we have left. So that means all the elements that remain are of order two. That also says that our CeeLo two subgroups are all isomorphic to Z2 cross Z2. If we compare with elements of order two in A5, we have 15 elements of order two there, the products of disjoint two cycles. So five, four, three, two, divide by two, divide by two, and then divide by another two for the switch. So we have 120 over eight is 15. Now, for the number of CeeLo two subgroups, let's suppose we have an element in the intersection of any two that's not equal to the identity. And that element is gonna commute with every element in our first subgroup and every element in our second subgroup, since these are both abelian. That means the centralizer of our element has to be greater than four. We have four elements in here, and we're gonna have an element in here that's not gonna be in the first one, since these are not equal. 
That means if we take the intersection of any two CLO2s, they intersected precisely the identity. So we have 15 elements. Each CLO2 is going to have three elements of order two, which means we have to have five CLO2 subgroups. Now, turning that around to find the order of the normalizer of a CLO2, we'll have that this normalizer has 12 elements. Now, this we can make use of. So, if we go back to Cayley's theorem, if we look at the version where we're working with cosets, okay, so I have a left regular action on cosets, so what's the setup here? I form the coset space G mod H. We're going to have a homomorphism from the group into the group of bijections from G mod H to itself. That's going to be given by, we just apply G to the coset XH by just multiplication on the left. Now, here, if I'm using a subgroup of order 12, then G mod H has five elements. So these bijections from this coset space to itself are just going to be isomorphic to S5, symmetric group on five letters. What I want is, is that this map is one to one. Then we can realize our group as a subgroup of an S5. The kernel is just going to be the largest normal subgroup, okay, N, such that N is contained in our subgroup H. Now, because I'm in a simple group, the only normal subgroups are the identity and the group itself. So that'll mean that the kernel is the identity, which means our pi is one to one, and we have our group realized as a subgroup of S5. To finish our main result, we show the following. If H is a subgroup of S sub n, n greater than or equal to five, when the index of H in S sub n is equal to two, H is equal to A sub n. So, to finish the main result, okay, we have the G non-abelian simple 60 elements embeds as a subgroup of S5. That subgroup has index two. So our result here says that the subgroup is equal to A sub five. That means we have only one isomorphism class. Now, show this result, H has index two, so by the index two theorem, H is normal in S sub n. I can intersect H with A sub n. The intersection of normal subgroups is again normal. So it'll be normal in S sub n, but it'll also be normal in A sub n. Okay, there we just have to check fewer conjugations. Now, because A sub n is simple, in our case, the intersection is the identity or all of A sub n. If it's just the identity, then there's only room for one element outside of these two subgroups in S sub n. That means that H is going to have to contain at least two disjoint two cycles. If we take their product, we get an element of A sub n, which is a contradiction to the statement here. So our result follows. Now, while we have Cayley's theorem out, let's take a look at the corollary. So that says, if the order of our group is finite, I have a subgroup, H, inside our group, and we have the order of the group does not divide the index of H and G factorial, then H contains a normal subgroup in G, okay, non-trivial also. So when we have G non-abelian simple with 60 elements, Okay, and we can assume that we don't have the isomorphism to A5 yet. We can consider certain types of subgroups that can be ruled out. So for instance, if we consider 15, 20, or 30 using our corollary, we have four factorial, which is 24, three factorial, six, two factorial is two. 60 does not divide any of these, so we can't have subgroups of these orders. Now note, we showed that we couldn't have a subgroup of order 15 directly, and we can't have a subgroup of order 30 because that would be normal and we're in a simple group of order 60. Note, for a subgroup of order 12, okay, we're going to have indexes 5, so 5 factorial is 120, and 60 does divide that. Also note, okay, for the subgroup of order 12, once we showed that we have only one isomorphism class, okay, and that it's an A5, 
the subgroup of order 12 is going to be A4. So it's the obvious choice. Let's consider the symmetry group of rigid motions of a regular icosahedron. Here we have an icosahedron. It's regular enough for us to work with. We note we have 20 faces given by equilateral triangles. We have 12 vertices and 30 edges. To count the number of rigid motions, we note I could pick any vertex. We have 12 options for where to send it. And once we make that choice, we have five ways to orient around that vertex. That means we have 60 rigid motions. Now, A5 also has 60 elements. So we want to show that this group is simple. Then it'll be isomorphic to A5. Now, the first step to that is to identify all rigid motions. Now, first, we'll consider the faces. So the faces are always going to occur in opposing pairs. So that means we have 10 pairs. And if I consider a rotation of one of these triangles, they'll generate elements of order 3. So that means we have 10 pairs times 3 minus 1, throwing away the identity rotation, to give 20 elements of order 3. That agrees with the count in A5. If I pick an opposing pair of vertices, we have okay, rotations generating elements of order 5. So we have 6 pairs times 5 minus 1 gives me 24 elements of order 5. Again, that agrees with the count from A5. For elements of order 2, okay, we first see the icosahedron. It's not so clear how they arise, but we should take the hint that we're looking for something that has to do with okay, opposing pairs of edges. Now, you'll note we do have opposing pairs of edges. If we consider the plane that they span, we could rotate by 180 degrees, carrying one edge to its opposite. Now, we have 30 edges, so that means 15 opposing pairs. So we'll have 15 times 2 minus 1, elements of order 2. Again, that matches the count in A5. If we add in the identity element, that gives us 60 rigid motions, so we have all elements in this group. Now note, the only orders that arise are 1, 2, 3, or 5, which agrees with A5. That's not enough to show sample. So to show sample, we just do what we did in our second proof, the A5 is simple. Okay, we're just going to compute each conjugacy class. So you need to identify the centralizers of elements. And then we just show that the combinatorics only adds up to give a normal subgroup when we have the identity subgroup or the entire group itself. So I'll leave that to you. As a final note, what does the icosahedron have to do with S5? So we're trying to find five elements that are being permuted when we apply these rigid motions. Now, one hint that we have comes from CELO theory. We know that we have five CELO2 subgroups. They're each isomorphic to Z mod 2 cross Z mod 2. So we want to look at the elements of order 2. Now you'll note if I pick an opposing pair of edges, okay, what do we have? We're going to have, as I go around, we're going to have perpendiculars if we go around halfway. And we also have two opposing edges on the top and the bottom. So when I pick an opposing pair of edges, we're actually going to get a sextet. And there are going to be five of these sextets. So when I perform a rigid motion, we're going to transform these sextets into other sextets. And that's where S5 comes into the picture.